Hey everybody, welcome to the 1947 Rise podcast. A podcast that helps India-born US trained Indians get integrated into the Indian technology ecosystem and inspires them to move back to India to build massive tech companies and or help enable the tech ecosystem. We do this by interviewing India-born US trained Indians who have moved back to India and built massive tech companies themselves. and or help enable the tech ecosystem awesome today we have nischay ag on the podcast and nischay is the founder of jar jar is a daily gold savings app that saves spare change and auto invest for you jar currently has 5 million users and man they are on fire nischay welcome to the show Hey, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. Let's start by you giving us your journey of growing up in India, then moving to US, and then moving back to India, and what made you move back to India. Sure. Uh, I I come from a typical tier two town, middle class family. Uh, generations have been into business, small. mom and pop store kind of business uh, i did engineering moved to bangalore got into jobs started working in it companies uh, i spent almost 9 years in it companies uh, most of the time i spent with honeywell aerospace uh, i was working in us for them then uh, there was a point when i had to come back to india i had to decide whether to continue or come back or move to one more country there were too much thing too many things were going on finally i decided to stay back in india because i wanted to get married to my girlfriend uh and that's how uh, uh i i stayed back in india and since since i decided to stay back in india life has given me enough to be in india for sure uh mm-hmm. it's been it's been a one hell of a ride since i moved back to india and i don't regret even for a moment i believe well we are lucky to uh, have you uh, back in india and uh, and when you initially moved back Uh, how was the move like uh, did you face any difficulties if there were any or it was pretty straightforward and when you got you know you just got going with work uh, so what exactly happened was uh, before moving to us itself right i i come from a typical tier 2 town uh, bangalore was once in a rare occasion visits for me never was accustomed to the bangalore lifestyle or anything moved to bangalore started working we were we were the yeah i mean we were the freshers and we were the ones who are made to work the most uh, the grant hours has been dumped on us uh, so we were working a lot and we hardly get to experience the real bangalore life and the pace were not so great back in the days uh, even if you wanted to go experience pubbing and all of those things the clubbing and all of those things you couldn't do much and suddenly opportunity came moved to us uh, once i got there the life changed like upside down in the sense uh, i'm off the work at 4 in the evening i have all day left for myself i don't know what to do uh, now i have free time for sure with money in my pockets and mm-hmm. and it took a while for me to accustom to that lifestyle uh, i used to live in jainagar fourth block the mo- one of the most busiest areas in bangalore and i could hear noise and traffic and people every day 24 bar 7 when i moved there i for the first time i'm experiencing that quite absolutely no noise no sounds nothing you could mm-hmm. hear rarely you could hear a car passing by rarely you could hear someone talking you're walking if you if you go on a walk on the streets people will greet you because that's how rare that you come across people <laughs> that was a complete different uh, it was a cultural shock to a certain extent uh, yeah. at the same time uh, you slowly start loving it uh you love everything that it comes the clean roads to people being courteous because so many little people are there you don't have any other option but to be courteous uh, the trust levels in the society and the whole uh, uh country was at a different level altogether uh, we bought something it was when we opened it was broken we went back to the store walmart i believe uh, we were setting up the home and one of the lights that we bought was broken um so we went back to walmart we were all anxious uh, we were paid like 27 dollars i don't know if they will take it back i don't know what to do and all of those things we went to the customer service i 
told that this was broken. He said, okay, let me fix it for you. And he took it and he gave me one new one. And it was like zero questions asked. He did not make me wait. He did not, sus- I mean, he did not have zero suspicion on me that I might have broken it and I have brought it back. He was very, I mean, that was quite a cultural shock at various level to even like, oh, I mean, did he just believe I could have, I could have been lying here, but he just yeah. believed me. And that was, that was quite a shock at various levels. Same with people, the way they treat you when you go to the restaurants, uh, the way they treat you when you go to do shopping, everything was quite surprising. It was a cultural shock. And you, I mean, for sure, coming up in India, uh, these things are the, these things are of the least priority for the people because they are fighting different battles you can't you can't blame them but they are fighting different battles these were of the least of the priority to be uh, courteous at a certain level and all of those things to trust and all uh, that was a huge cultural shock and slowly it grows on you and i started loving that life uh, not lying at all but when i had to decide to move back again everything popped up uh, my love life my parents and everything when i moved back again it was I had forgotten to a great extent that how it was to live in India. And that's how that how I custom. Uh, to be very honest, when I moved back to India, when I go for shopping, when I see a t-shirt which is say 1500, I like a ah, beast dollar. Eh? That's how I used to <laughs> I used to do the reverse math. Many people were telling that yeah. it doesn't matter if you live in 50, 20 years in US, you'll still convert everything into rupees, right? I'd gotten so accustomed that when I moved back to India, when I see a price like coffee day was still serving coffee at 120 rupees. And they're like, one and a half dollars is okay. That's how, that was how my mind was working. And that's how I accustomed I was. And it was, it was again, I had to move back to this noisy environment uh, where people are honking for no reason. Uh, people are being loud on the streets. Uh, restaurants were like really noisy, loud. You could hear crockery, utensils sound all that time. It is never a date experience in India. It's 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 like you're eating with hundred more people. That's the only thing. that's the only thing. It was very difficult for sure at a cultural level because I had to accustom myself back into the country. Mm-hmm. The roads were bad. You couldn't afford a good car. Literally, you couldn't afford a good car in India. Right? So everything and, was a- and and you had a Mustang in US, right? Yeah, I had I had a killer Mustang. I had a convertible Mustang, and I I, I mean I was twenty three when I moved to US, and I, the first thing I did was buying a Mustang there. And I had I had really amazing time. When I move back to India, it's almost impossible to have Mustang. Mustang is ninety lakh rupees in India, which is like mm-hmm. insane at every level. Yeah, you and you're right. Uh, this is the common uh, thread that I've seen among you know people who have moved back, which is a reverse cultural shock in the beginning. Yes, and uh, and Nishche, you know, you moved back, and then. Of course, you were in the leadership uh, team at Bounce. I would love for you to, uh, you know, talk more about your experience at Bounce. And then uh, now you've founded uh, a sexy company called uh, Jar. Uh, and yeah, let's dive into that. Sure. Uh, see, when I moved back to India, I got into again regular job. I was working for, uh, I worked very briefly for Accenture, Infosys. From there, I moved to Accenture. I was working with Accenture, and that's when my friends, my childhood friends, started this company called Wicked Ride, uh, which is a premium and luxury motorcycle rental company. Uh, they were seeing good traction. They were still running the business out of a Facebook page and that informal website, that's all. Uh, but uh, we saw that there is a huge potential. And what we were doing was bridging the aspiration and affordability. As a child coming from a middle class family, we always wanted to ride those big motorcycles. Even Bullet was like uh, Royal Enfield was a big motorcycle for us. And now we are got a, got an exposure to even bigger bikes, Ducatis, the Harley Davidsons, the Indians, the Triumphs, and all of those things. We wanted to experience all of those things. And one day uh, we wanted to, and there was no options available. That's when we strike to us like there will be hundreds and hundreds, thousands of us. Uh, people like us and they need something like that and they started this and it took it off it took off really well uh, now there was, there was an opportunity where we could scale it pan india and we wanted to build systems and that's when vivek uh, who's a, one of the co-founder and the ceo of ja, bounce he asked me do you want to come on it's not like do you want to you like you have to come over you had to that. <laughs> and i saw this as a great opportunity i was able to move back to canada then uh, 
because I thought I will go back to Canada, stay there for three or four years because my wife was in school again. She was doing her master's. She is a doctor and she was going through her master's in India. Uh, I I was like, should I go to Canada or should I uh, uh, stay back here, get on this? And finally, for I don't know for what reason, I I took the challenge. I is like a nosedive in the pay. Uh, I have to support my wife in the college. Uh, I have to support my parents. Uh, I have an EMI running for my home. I, I recently had a bought a car, so EMI running for the car, everything. But uh, but something convinced me that two things. One is I'm going to work with my friends. It's going to be an interesting problem statement. And it's like there's like one moonshot that we are taking that may or may not work. And if it works, it's going to be like insanely great thing that we will be built, which will last forever. That's what our thought, that was my thought process was. Uh, it was like very, I mean, it, it did not, I did not take ages or months or weeks. It was like a day's time. It was like 24 hour turnaround time like this or that. And finally, I took the decision that uh, I had seen because these guys were doing rental business and there was no rental business back there, back in those days in India. Being experienced uh, herds, national enterprise and all of those things, I've seen how big these become. And that was one of the biggest uh, plus point, I believe. Uh, these countries, these Western countries, uh, especially US and all, they're at least 30, 40 years ahead in terms of service industry uh, and all of those things. You get to experience all these great ex services, which is completely missing in India. And I could connect the dots and I felt this can be really big. If we play our game right and we were like, we were discussing, we started talking within one week. I joined them like how to have it across 10, 100 cities, how to have at least 1,000 vehicles in each city. So you should have 100,000 vehicles across the country. That is the scale because enterprise, each PO was 6, 600,000 cars to companies like uh, Ford and all these guys. So it was like, it was very much possible. And India is a two-wheeler market. Everyone knows how to ride a school wheeler. There's a huge moving population. There was an opportunity. And just because if I was not in the US, probably I wouldn't have taken that decision wouldn't have been that easier because I couldn't even my my imagination is limited to what I've seen in my life. And mm -hmm. being there helped me imagine a larger picture, think more thinking like how technology could play a role, how we used to simply book a car, uh, go to uh, get down in get um, get out of the airport, walk up to the nearest enterprise, pick up the car. It was so easy to pick up the car and dropping off. You go there, you drop off the keys and just take your flight and come back. It was so e it was so easy and it made me it made me think that we can build something like that here, and that was the pivoting point for me to take a dive into this whole startup world about seven years back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it seems like your experience in uh, in U.S. came in handy, right? Uh, yes, you so could, yeah. Uh, absolutely. In every, everything was like, I could see all the innovations, little, little, small, small innovations, and which cost nothing for companies to build. Uh, for example, when I landed there, uh, one of my friends gave me a check, and uh, the Wells Fargo had an app where you could simply scan the check and done, upload. You don't have to go to the bank, deposit the check. Nothing was required. And it was like mind blowing for me. And I, I don't know why we don't have it in India. I don't know what level of fraud was a challenge. But then there are many such simple things, uh, uh, something like Urban Club. Our apartment had a website. If something was broken, you go raise a ticket there. Someone will come and fix it in less than four hours based on the severity, based on immediately four hours, 24 hours. And Urban Club was a very simple thing that that we discussed back in the days it was like in india there is nothing is there you cannot there is no way you can get a vetted serviceman handyman who can come and fix things for you at home and it could be such a large large business in india uh, we, we we could identify in every sector from uh, newspaper to social media to uh, simple services for day to day life car rentals to service of uh, uh, vehicles to taxi everything was like a huge opportunity that i felt here because when i moved back to india uh, uh, i had to fly out again within three months and getting a cab was a nightmare uh you need to call you need to call just dial they'll give you 10 numbers you need to call everyone you need to negotiate everyone throws fancy numbers at you there was no standardization there was no trust uh in the whole system and we could feel i i could identify 100 more things where i felt the service was missing but at the same time it immediately did not occur that we could be building one of these services it that that 
point of epiphany was when vivek said let's build uh, a rental business and i was like yeah we could build 100 different things here now <laughs> actually yeah we can we can we should that's how the whole thing played out for me played out for you and uh, and now would love for you to uh, dive into jar how did it come about i mean it was an evolution it was not like overnight i decided fintech and all of those things uh, with wicked ride wicked ride later became bounce bounce is a product of wicked ride uh, there we were doing uh, big motorcycle rentals from there we moved to uh, uh, small scooters uh, starting out renting scooters and all but we wanted to move to uh, start doing uh, point a to point b commute uh and that's when uh, we got good funding from the leading investors like sequoia axel maverick b cap and all of these guys so we had to now deploy the scooters from engineering heading engineering to i moved to supply set up the factory set up manufacturing set up supply uh, started rolling out scooters maintaining vehicles on the field and all we scaled it to 35000 scooters uh, it was one hell of a ride for sure nightmares the sleepless nights it gave us everything did all the mistakes that we that one could possibly do learned really quick i traded really fast uh from there i moved to business side of things and once i moved to business side of things the idea was very simple uh we wanted to build a gojek of india uh, or grab of india who started as a mobility company and diversified into everything and there one of the things that was very very interesting for me was financial services so uh i started introducing a lot of financial services to audience base of bounds users of bounds partners of bounds uh, riders of bounds all these guys we started selling insurance loans credit cards bank accounts uh, vehicle lease all of those things we were building a roadmap for it and then covid happened and i had invested too much in financial services by then and i felt there is a huge opportunity very little people are working on it right now yes payments have taken off big time but what next are beyond payments uh, and there is a gap is what i felt and uh, uh, we did deeper uh, uh, studies in terms of went spoke to hundreds of people on the street in the restaurants and various other places got insane amount of insights got conviction that there is a gap in the market and there is a great opportunity for us to fill that gap and build something really impactful long lasting and a, a profitable company end of the day uh, and that's when uh, that's when uh, i decided to move out of bounds and start jar got it got it and uh, and where are we today uh shay and also uh, what's you know the the magical outcome you have in mind for jar see oh, many many people are asking like oh when will jar become unicorn or when will jar become this when will jar i i my thesis for jar is like uh, it should become a generational company it should uh, outlast everyone at least outlast me at least and it should really create value for the user see end of the day a company should create value for four people its consumers its employees its investors and its promoters but it starts with the consumers once you create value for consumers the value creation for the rest three automatically will happen and we want to be that platform which will create impact in everyone's life uh, every user's life which will help them navigate the tranches of financial world because this world needs money to move for sure and everyone is putting their heart and soul into earning that money now managing that money cannot become one more 9 to 5 job and and that job should be outsourced to jar for for everyone's perspective we want to take over that burden from people where we help them navigate build the habit invest in the right instrument get the right services and live a life a little more stress free that's what that's what we want to build that's the vision for jar love it love it and uh and what's the the favorite part of your job the favorite uh, uh, we are hiring high agency people uh, uh most of them are inbound uh, and what i'm loving is uh how they are making my life easier every day I, i i was thinking that every day it's going to become tougher but these guys are making it easier for me every day uh, amazing team uh, great agency uh, they are there they are present i could feel the presence all the time last night we were working on something i called someone at 130 thinking he might be sleeping he he received like in half a ring he said hey what's up 
like uh, he was ex- he was expecting a call from you <laughs> <laughs> like uh, hey, what are you doing avik no i am talking to money like he was talking to one more colleague <laughs> and they were talking about work and that that that's a different level of uh, uh, energy that we are experiencing at this moment and that surprises me every day uh, uh, i mean uh, i am super uh, uh, stoked that they wake up with the same rigor and excitement as i do about the work <laughs> and that's 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 uh, heartwarming at the same time surprising and i can totally see the excitement on your face my friend <laughs> you're all pumped uh, and what's the hardest part about your job see uh, see uh, uh, to be very honest there is a certain level of freedom and that freedom makes you take a lot of decisions and those decisions are the hardest part uh, all your life you have been told what to do someone else is doing the thinking for you now i have to tell what to do for the rest of the organization and that is the toughest part is what i believe uh, i think uh, getting the right set of people we will do 10 mistakes while getting to a destination but deciding the destination is the hardest part for me is what i personally feel at this moment because once you bring the high agency because i it's humanly impossible for one guy to know everything you need to depend you need to work with a gang of people you need to work with a group of people who are good at so many different things one guy is good at product one guy is good at marketing one guy is good at storytelling one guy is good at performance one guy is good at partnerships all these people are highly dependent but setting the common goal and aligning all these people towards that goal and make them work uh, it's like an orchestra is what i sometimes feel and uh, being that guy is uh, like once you t- taking the decision is the tough part and once the decision is taken the rest of the organization rally towards that but i need to take the decision probably every 15 days for a sprint like what to prioritize what not to prioritize and my 15 days goes in thinking that next one should i get this fixed or get this fixed what is the low hanging fruit which is if i fix this will i be dealing with this again 6 months down the line will i be dealing with this again 3 months down the line how am i going to be what is the consequence of this decision uh, i need to get better at that uh, I, i mean one thing is we have a very strong culture that disagree but commit uh, i may have a completely radical thought about something we argue we do everything we debate but finally we arrive at a conclusion i may be against that conclusion but i commit to that and same thing everyone else is doing but uh, probably that will that jugal bandi will go for a long time uh, and i want it to go as long as possible because uh, if there is good disagreement that's when it means that people are still invested people are uh, still care about what they are doing they have a strong opinion and they have strong uh, reasons to for those opinions and if they are ready to commit those opinions and reasons towards the cause you can't ask for anything more than that from people let's sure we'll switch gears here and <clears throat> i think you moved back in uh, correct me 2013 2013 uh you know it was for you you had to call uh uh dial uh, to to call a cab you had to call somebody i forget what well, you mentioned yeah, we had to we had, i mean it's like uh, uh, there were there were a couple of companies like savari or something of the back in those days uh, you mm-hmm. need to call their call center uh, do everything and there is no promise they may or they may not send uh, yeah it was too stressful for sure just going to airport and fast and forward to today we had to pay like 3000 rupees i remember it was nothing oh, wow. cheap and fast forward to today things have become so convenient right and and that's again because the indian startup ecosystem has reached that inflection point now and and people are noticing that uh, especially a lot of uh, folks who are living abroad and a lot of them are thinking about moving back to india what advice would you give them if if they are planning to move back to india what frameworks they should have in mind uh, and around that Uh, to be very honest from a uh, uh, experience perspective in terms of uh, uh, they are not missing out much by not moving back uh, uh, yeah infrastructure may be a problem at a certain extent but uh, uh, so many other things are so easy here for sure you could afford to have a 
guy who can come and wash your car every day you can have afford to have someone come and clean up your room every day you can have afford to have someone to come and cook your cook at your place every day these are like very small minor things which really doesn't play it's not so important i believe what why someone should move back to india at this point of time is without their knowledge they have mimicked or they have imbibed so many good things which is of an evolved uh, countries evolved uh, developed countries they have learned so many things without their knowledge because you simply mimic you simply get into the groove and you would have picked up so many things without their knowledge and once they come back to india it becomes so glaring that okay this is missing this is missing this is missing and it becomes very easy for you to spot opportunity and work on it and if you are not an entrepreneur guy it's okay you can figure out that uh, there are these companies in this category i would love to go join them and i can be a key guy there and start working on these key initiatives who knows down the line you can start something of your own but you will be playing a very very important role for sure in organizations you will have without your knowledge you're on a treadmill yeah you picked up so many good things but you're on a treadmill there uh mm-hmm. you it's very tough to get off that treadmill for you being there but if you come back to india you have a different power altogether you might have good amount of saving you're not worried about when is my next month's rent where is from next month's rent coming from uh and uh, probably you have green card or whatever it is it's so easy to go back to that life but you should you owe that shot to yourself where you come back and try all these things uh, and it's it's really easy you you don't have to get up from your couch to get whatever you want from grocery to food to everything uh, life is not so difficult also at this moment is what i personally mm-hmm. uh, yeah i recently had me to dubai and all uh, from a lifestyle standpoint i did not feel anything different from india and dubai at least for me and people who are coming back to india are probably at my financial uh, well being level i will not say freedom or whatever it is whatever cash flow i have they will have a certain cash a similar cash flow for sure uh, and lifestyle wise i did not feel any difference for me it did not feel any different for me in dubai or india i could hail a cab whenever i want i could eat out whenever i want i was getting i was whatever i was eating out there i, I get i have all those options here for sure shopping wise you have all the options now i don't think any of my friends when someone is coming from us hey, do you want chocolate like no 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 aa jao bas aa jao kaafi hai yeah do you want electronics aa jao bhai kaafi hai come back <laughs> i remember back in the days when i used to come back they used to like get me a hard disk one tv hard disk no no one asked for those things no one cared for those things the whole internet every evolu- revolution has changed everything you don't have to have any of those things and life is life i mean you you have super fast internet at a throw away price uh you have super fast internet on your phones at throw away price uh people are experiencing uh, gigahertz speeds and all of those things in india which is not accessible in us it's very expensive in us or even rest of uh, all other countries i've been there you had to wait for 6 o'clock in the evening to so that you can start getting free incoming calls india ha, ha, is having you free coming in calls since 2000 Two, I believe, and US is still. I don't know how it is right now, but when I was staying, it was still not free, and it was a it was a big cultural shock for me. Why the fuck should I pay for incoming calls, and why should I pay for an incoming SMS? Twenty cents for an SMS, I'm like, why should I pay for it? Uh, life is. Uh, you're close to your families. You're you're always an outsider there. You're never an outsider. Yeah. Doesn't matter which part of the country you live in, you never feel as an outsider. totally agree with you uh you're you're on the treadmill there you're an outsider and and things have changed drastically in india uh you know one as you described uh, the you know the living standard has gone up and the opportunities right uh and i think you put it in a right way <clears throat> where you know a lot of the things are still to be built in india and they're already built in uh in us so it's easier for them to spot those uh, opportunities and then that's what you did at bounce and yes. now the things at jar and uh this year when you know when you feel overwhelmed unfocused uh you know things are not going the way you want them to go uh do you have any frameworks that helps you get back on track for me it's like uh um, for me the simple framework is i call vivek many a times <laughs> you will shake me back to reality 
uh, at the same time, I have good support circle for sure from the startup world and all. Uh, we are good well wishers. We are good investors. Uh, a lot of investors uh, we with whom we have worked in the past and all. Uh, we reach out to them. We have enough friends in the ecosystem and all. And uh, worst case, you just have to call your ex colleague from one of your old companies. Talk to them for thirty minutes. When they explain, they end up explaining all the problems they have at work. That is a good wake up call for you. Like. I have such a better thing going on here. I need to focus more here. It becomes much easier for sure. You just have to pick up your phone and uh, talk to people from your past life. Uh, they will. That reminds you that where you would have been if you are not doing what you are doing right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and even now, uh, rarely I speak to my colleagues, ex colleagues from US and all these guys. And like they always, they they all tell that you did a great job. Uh, I keep telling hundred people here that how you moved back and you how you been part of Wicked Ride, how you been part of Bounce, how now how you are building Jar and all of those things. Like, mm-hmm. dude, you are a better guy than me when I was there for sure. I remember you were smarter, you were more hardworking, you are everything better than me. You should be doing this. Why are you stuck there? What are you doing there? Why why are you doing that? I keep telling them, yeah, I need to take that call. That's tough for me. Is what they keep telling me, and and. Uh, here the framework is very simple uh, go back to the roots as as whenever you feel uh, later distracted you have enough you have left enough breadcrumbs throughout the journey which will remind you to get back on the path of righteousness or whatever you call but uh, uh, it's all it's all the uh, support system that we have here which will help us to be more focused it makes life a little easier for sure yeah no absolutely and having the right set of people uh, around you is very very powerful yeah. and, and, uh, and, and uh, it's very easy i mean i come up with stupid ideas which is going to distract the entire org or whatever it is and the entire team is like nah. <laughs> having the right team around you they put you back in your place so many times it's like it's at the same time we like i start like it now i give a disclaimer that this might be a stupid idea please but please hear me out and they listen to me and they say nah <laughs> love it love it nishay what 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 keeps you going uh, it's 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 actually fun I mean, uh, back in the days to be very honest right i come from a corporate world where we built something you have zero visibility that when it will go live what happened who used it from the business was the was the impact really created are they continuing to use or did they wanted some change did that change went to some other team which worked on it you have zero visibility of whatever is happening once we moved to startup right whatever i build in the morning that gets shipped to the production in the afternoon and you can see the numbers change f- from the same day and that that is like a big driving factor for me uh, the visibility to the impact is what driving me everything every decision you take every uh, small change you do in the product every small decision you take in a marketing campaign or a you set out a activation effort project or anything we could start seeing those impact on a daily basis and and that's what is driving us like it's exciting for us we do something it works or it doesn't work the moment it doesn't work we get into introspection to understand what went wrong why did it not do how do we correct this it's like uh, uh, the team gets very anxious if something is not working and that gets me going like that level of ownership and involvement in the whole process gets me going is what i believe i think uh, yeah we have a uh, you, we are creating a jar in a utopian world like it has to be it has its right place in a utopian world but uh, can that be our driving factor today i don't think so we will be fooling ourselves we set milestones we set milestones for quarterly yearly and all of those things we go after that we have that unilateral focus towards that particular goal in the short term uh, and we believe it's a marathon you keep need to you need to keep setting these uh, goals we have a annual goal we want to have, we have a goal in our mind for december 2022 to get there we need to see it as quarters quarters to months months to sprints now am i doing whatever i'm doing is letting me get where i want to be at december and i think that's that whole process the whole setting small milestones rather than large milestones is keeping us going i believe if i think that i want to build this beautiful this kind it becomes a lot of stress but if you say okay you just have to get there for now gotcha and 
<clears throat> look, we know you because of Bounds and and now because of Jar. What do your friends know you for? Uh, friends, friends know me for uh, talking about all random uh, things which makes no sense at various levels. I will read something. I will watch something. I'll come with all excitement that you know what they, here there is this kind of tribal people who do this or there is this uh, country which became like this. You know, this people actually migrated from this. Like, why? Why do you know this? <laughs> How does it? And uh, and to be to be very frank, right? All these uh, things that I keep myself invested in, uh, trying to learn and all of those things that all it helps me. These are all different dots in my mind. and when we are navigating at work also right it helps me connect these dots without our knowledge uh, i i keep telling uh, uh, stupid proverbs and uh, uh, all of those things and without our knowledge when we are in the meeting the other people started quoting that do you remember you said this and this is my thesis this is why we should do this this way and that's that's fun at certain levels for sure uh, but yeah as i said uh, uh, i will have too many different train of thoughts sometimes too disconnected with one to another that's what my friends know me for <laughs> uh, but you're you're the person who, who people enjoys hanging out with and I <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, I love coffee. Uh, I love coffee big time. Uh, I'm always up for a coffee, uh, and I love typical South Indian filter coffee. I love my cappuccino uh, mm -hmm. for sure, but at the same time, uh, I love my regular filter coffee. I come from a family of coffee growers. Uh, my family has been having coffee plantation for a while, uh, for generations, uh, and a small plantation and all of those things. But we grow coffee, and I never bought coffee. and uh been a coffee lover all my life and when i see all this blue toka a third wave all are popping up here and there and they explain the coffee like yeah this is end of the day what, what we are growing is what you guys are selling here <laughs> is what i sometimes feel but they have done something really amazing what i mean i really love how they are bringing making coffee mainstream uh, how they are making coffee a drink of business and all of those things uh, i love what every one of these brands are doing and i love to hang out at these places and i love to watch people uh, uh it's quite interesting to hang around these places and i i purposefully hang around these places to watch people uh, of what they are doing how, how how they behave and all of those things and me and misba we have long conversations around these things it's fun for sure <laughs> no it's awesome uh, nishay really appreciate you for taking the time to come on the podcast and you know talk about your journey of uh, moving back and building bounce and and now uh, building jar and i'm i'm really really excited for you for the team at jar and the future of jar looking forward to it thank you